Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? The ever impressive. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I am doing just great. I'm working a little bit on the Phoenix over here. So as you can see, I've got the neck not stripped down, but pretty much sanded. And once I hit the clear on it, none of this should show up. It should kind of blend in a little bit. That shit that was over here and over here on the back of the neck, even with some of it on the headstock, the back of it, um, I don't know what that was. There was a lot of it over here, and some of it was kind of deep scratched into the finish of the back of the neck. This stuff was scratched all the way into the wood. Um, and it's right over here. I got a little spot right here that I'm going to try to get out. I don't want to lose the little volute or whatever you want to call that over here. But that's pretty much taken care of. Once I hit it with the clear on the back of the neck over here, that'll be taken care of. The fretboard's all protective, so is the binding that is around the fretboard. And right now I'm working a little bit on the body, trying to get a lot of these chips and dents and everything else fixed up over here. So I finally got the primer, and I'm hoping tomorrow I'll mask off the back of the neck and I'll get the body and the headstock, uh, at least the front of the headstock in primer. And so right now I got a spot here that I got to sand down, some spots over here that I got to sand down. This I worked on a little bit and I'm going to do a little bit of a touch up on it with skimming a little bit of the thicker CA glue in there. This one here I ended up doing a little bit of work. This was on an angle and now it's pretty much flat and rounded the way it's supposed to be. Now if you see like these little pits that are inside there, those are, that's filled. That's not like messed up or anything. So I'm going to go ahead and get my glasses on. My hands are pretty dusty right now. Actually, it's pretty dusty on this countertop too. And I want to skim coat this a little bit. So how I do that is kind of like how I would put Bondo on shit. I have the thick CA glue right here. And I'm going to put a little bit on the top of this. And I kind of want to go past, past the damaged area on one side. I'll take my razor blade and I'm going to force a lot of this into the cracks and stuff. And I'll go back the other way and do the same thing. I don't want that to glue itself to the counter so now I'm going to take some activator, hit it, that'll dry up really nice. I'm going to do the same thing with this area over here where there's some little chipping going on. Some of it I was able to get out pretty good. Some of it was a little bit of a pain in the ass. I said I'll put a little bit of CA glue. Oh, you're not even in the camera to see this, so let me move you over. Put a little bit of CA glue past the damage area. I'm going to take my razor blade skim it and then hit it with some activator and then that'll cure up really good and right now this is it's flat as can be all I gotta do is sand it and hit it with the primer and that'll be done this stuff here it dries the activator is nice I got a different activator than I normally would use so this here I'm gonna have to sand that down so what I'm doing is I'm block sanding it following the body the contour of the body and that's kind of how you want to do this so I'm going to hit this I'm not staying in one spot I'm kind of overlapping into the rest of the area of the contour because if you do it in one spot and stay in one spot it's going to end up making a flat spot and I don't want that So this is starting to go down where I want it. I'm going to have to do the same thing like I did with the razor blade trick on this one. Stay on the neck. Damn neck holder. Now this one here didn't, wasn't like damage to the point where it was uh, a big dent. This area over here was kind of crushed. 
So what I'm doing is, see this CA glue is not entirely dry. All right, I'll give that a little bit and go back to that in a little while. So I can work on this side. Yeah, this was crushed over here. It had like a, like a dent over here. Not really, really bad, but the paint was chipped and so was a little bit of the wood. That's what I like about the CA glue. It's going to penetrate into the wood and help make that area stronger. So I'm going to follow the contour of the body. Don't make any flash spots. I'm going to continue to sand around the edges just like if I was just working on that area. Alright, so this part over here, you can feel that it's a little bit on the tacky side still. With some activator. Now I need to. Uh, I use bounty paper towel. And this is the only time you're going to see me using paper towels is when it's, the body is not finished. If it was finished, I would not be using paper towel at all. So get the sandpaper shit off of here. I'm using 180 grit right now. This shit over here was so hard, I had to use my file on it to start getting it to shape. Now I am putting some more deeper scratches in this. I'm not worried about that. The primer that I have is a filler primer. So now I'm going to go with some faster now. Right. 
Now I want all of this glue to disappear over here and only fill in the chip spots. And there, like I over here, the veneer is still intact. So I know I'm not making a big divot over here. I have to switch it over to 220. All right, so there's the chip here. And there was another one right over here. All right. a little bit. hit that like I did with the use the CA glue as a bundle. My razor blade stuck to the and I'm using a thick CA glue so it's not running all over the place. And you can see where the CA glue is going because it's shiny. Alright. So this one here is still a little rubbery. No. No, oh, I had tape on here. That's probably why. The masking tape over here was sticking to the CA glue. And it's probably the glue from the masking tape. Alright, and you just throw this away before it glues itself to the counter. Best way to get rid of razor blades is stick them inside of a old pop can. All right, put the cap back on this.
Alright. I'll do the same thing I did before. And the razor blade. CA glue. Put a little bit in the back. Kind of right where the damage starts. Starts. That was some of that. Get rid of the razor blade. Get that cure up a little bit before I start sanding it. This stuff here there's a couple little things over here that will come out when I sand the edge not very big but like I said this part over here was crushed a little bit and dented and you can kind of see that the paint was crinkled a little bit and chipped so that got filled this one here got filled basically all the chips that I notice here are pretty much pretty much disappeared that I gotta round off a little bit more now this is not a finished sanding I still have to do a finished sanding on this before primering oh wait I put the uh, I scraped it around here so I'm gonna have to sand that yeah so I'm gonna end up doing a finished sanding on here because I'm going to sand this all down with 400 grit sandpaper. The 400 grit sandpaper is going to get to the uh, primer. Then the primer is going to get sanded too. And then it's going to get sprayed. So right now I'm pretty much kind of done. Exception of letting these guys dry up really good and then hitting them with the finished sanding which is going to level them off really nice and have them nice and smooth so when I do the primer on top of this I shouldn't even tell that there was any damage done to this body whatsoever and then a little scratch like this I can get my fingernail in it primer is going to go right into there this edge I have to sand a little bit but that'll be done with the finishing sanding because there is a little bit of an odd weird type of a lip here it's like straight on this side on this side it's like a step almost and it's like that all the way down so I don't know if that was done on purpose or not alright so that's it for now I'll get back into this thing tomorrow All right, so this has been sitting in the heated garage pretty much all evening, and uh, now it's the next day, and I have it in the basement here hanging, and I got to let it cure a little bit more. The filler primer is thicker, so it takes a little bit longer for it to cure. It's got three coats on it, and as you can see, the damaged areas are no longer damaged. And front of it's nice and flat. Back of it looks really good. Yeah, this came out, I'm really happy with it. Edges are rounded with no flat spots on them, which is nice. So the nice thing about a filler primer is it's thicker. It's kind of like uh, putting a thin glaze coat 
And when I mean glaze coat, some people we can re- refer to it as bondo as well. But it's like putting a thin coat of glaze coating on uh, the surface of whatever you're working on. So when you transition from paint to bare wood, or in this case veneer, to paint again, that can create a wave. And what happens is you're supposed to feather sand it, which means that the transition from the bare wood to the paint, you get this real wide uh, fade out, okay, when you feather it in. It kind of looks like it's feathered in. And the sprayable primer, the thicker stuff, fills that. So when I do my sanding on this thing, and again, block sanding, this is going to be all flat. So you shouldn't see any waves or nothing. The only thing you should see is just this lip on each side where that's supposed to be. So that's the nice thing about using a sprayable uh, primer that is a filler primer. Now, these areas here, like right there, right there, that hole I left there for reference, that one was not stripped. There's one right over here. And there's one right over here. Those I don't mind because that's going to be covered with the uh, the cover plate over here with the controls on it. And that gives me a reference of where those holes have to be drilled at. Same thing around the pickup area. You can see a little bit of a divot. And that's good because I know exactly where to put the pickup right back in the same place it came from. Headstock looks good. And, uh, yeah, so I did mask off the truss rod. It is masked off inside there. This area here is going to get some paint. And I did mask off where the uh, nut's supposed to be. So that's also masked off. So, yeah, I'm really happy with this. This is going to work out really good. And it's going to come out really nice. So I need to get some more of this sprayable bundle because I'm going to be using more or sprayable primer, sorry. I'm going to be using more of this on some of my finishes here. Now the neck is still masked off. I'm not going to unmask the neck until after I do my wet sanding because I don't want any of the wet sanding juice or whatever you want to call it, uh, water to get on the neck and stain it at all. Even though the neck does have a uh, clear coat still on it, I just don't want to risk it. So yeah, this is really, really looking good. Oh, and then on the back of it here, the edges are still nice and sharp where the belly rest is. So yeah, coming along just great. Just got to let it dry for a few days. Probably, maybe I might give it a week. I'm not too sure. I want to get this guitar back to him before next month. So the way I've been working on these things, it's been happening pretty good. But... I just want to get it before the weather starts getting really, really cold. All right, so that's it for this video. You guys take it easy. Have a good one.